Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, we'll show you the week four upsets from Northwest Arkansas, Conway, and the capital city. Plus, the Battle of Benton County, a 4A East showdown in Batesville. With highlights of 20 games, Hooton's has it covered from West Fork to win and from Charleston to Cherry Valley. As the high school football world turns, these are the plays of their lives next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Let's take it to him. This is our time of the year. Top 10 matchups all across our state last night. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton, and for the next 30 minutes, we will show you highlights from high school football games all across our state. The best of Arkansas high school football. A lot of top 10 games. Number one, Springdale playing number two, Fort Smith Southside last night. Conway undefeated playing Little Rock Central in a matchup of unbeaten teams. Number one, Pulaski Academy, the top ranked team in AAA last night, played host to Central Arkansas Christian. We have highlights of those games and many more all coming up in the next half hour. We're glad you tuned in for Hooton's Arkansas football tonight. And we will begin with Class 2A, where the number one team is the Charleston Tigers. And last night they played host to the Lavaca Golden Arrows, their big rival. And that's where we'll begin tonight on Hooton's Arkansas football. And it's brought to you by Sonic. It might surprise you a little bit that the top-ranked team in AA has a sophomore quarterback, but Matt Stewart is no ordinary sophomore. Check this out. On the first play of the second quarter, he's going 38 yards for a touchdown. That put Charleston up 14 to nothing on its rival, Lavaca. The Golden Arrows trying to play catch-up now. Junior quarterback Jeff Powers searches for a receiver and hits Casey Champion wide open. He rumbles 23 yards untouched. That made it 14 to seven. Now, Charleston looking to extend that lead. Stewart fakes a handoff, gives to junior Drew Hill. This guy's unbelievable too. Drew does the rest, four yards out. That made it 21 to seven. Your final top ranked Tigers 35, Lavaca 14. Arkansas Baptist is off to its best start in the Coach Tucker Bernard era. Last night, the Eagles playing host first year program, Little Rock Episcopal Collegiate. Baptist built a 21 to nothing halftime lead and kept rolling in the second half. Richard Cook scored three touchdowns for the Eagles and junior quarterbacks Rhett Hatcher and Levi Miller both had good points for Baptist. The Eagles beat Carlisle to start the season and they're shooting for a home playoff game in November. Final score, Baptist 38, Episcopal 0. Good crowd on hand last night at Quigley Stadium to see if undefeated Little Rock Lutheran could beat the Magazine Rattlers on homecoming night. Neither team scored in the first half. Magazine sophomore Donald Bonner had this touchdown pass called back by a holding penalty. Flags flew frequently in this one. Lutheran put together a 69-yard drive late in the second quarter. Junior quarterback Willie Bishop passing the classmate Colby Campbell for big gains on the drive. But with just eight seconds remaining before the break, Magazine blocks Lutheran's field goal attempt and the Rattlers would score the only points of the game early in the third quarter to deal Little Rock Lutheran its first loss. Final score, Magazine Rattlers 6, Little Rock Lutheran 0. You understand that? We got to go out, guys. We got to play hard every single down. The moment of truth is almost here. Are you guys up to the challenge? That's yes, what sir. I want to know. Yes, Everybody up to the challenge. Yes, sir. We're going to have a business. Yes, sir. We're going to take this victory. Yes, sir. We're going to give us nothing. Each and every play, we got to go out and get it. Yes. You understand that? Come on, Let's go with our family of three. Come on, baby. Right. 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 One, two, three. Right. That's Earl's head coach, Maurice Moody. His Bulldogs are still barking loud a week after blowing out Mark Tree by 60 last Friday. But the opponent last night was Walnut Ridge, and the Bobcats kept all their options open. The first option being running back Adam Hustedler. The sophomore would get the ball four times on Walnut Ridge's first drive. It only took six plays for Walnut Ridge to cover 72 yards. 
Huffstetler took the option pitch from Andrew Ballard and scooted 13 yards for the touchdown. Walnut Ridge was up 7 to nothing just two and a half minutes into the game. Things got worse for Earl on its first play from scrimmage. Walnut Ridge's Kai Rorick strips the ball and recovers. The Bobcats could not convert on that turnover, however, and Earl would get it going eventually with Marcelo Moody. The guy couldn't be slowed down, and the talented Bulldogs improved to 3-1 and one and stayed in the middle of the playoff race. Final score, Earl 54, Walnut Ridge 13. Oh, Mark Tree traveled to Parkin last night and jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter. Parkin tried to answer on third and long. Randall Davis rips off this long run all the way down into Indian territory. Parkin still needed two yards to keep the drive alive. Not a chance. Patrick Powell, Ron Thompson, Michael Scott, and Sky Hood stuff the run, and Mark Tree takes over. A couple of plays later, it's the Indians quarterback, Braden Malone, hooking up with Mark Johnson. A 58-yard touchdown play. That put Mark Tree up 21 to nothing, and the Indians rolled from there. Now, Mark Tree had lost its first conference game in more than three years last week, but they bounced back. Final score, Coach Tim Brannon's Indians, 42, Parkin, 0. The number 10 ranked Hughes Blue Devils licked the part last night at Cross County where Ayodale Ogensaken and Johnny Payton combined for 262 yards and four touchdowns. Hughes stayed atop the three AA standings while Cross County must regroup for a big game next week at Mark Tree. Final score, Hughes 33, Cross County 7. Like I told you in there, guys, I'm never worried about you. I'm never worried about what you'll do. I'm worried about whether I have given you everything that you need. Uh, my, uh, my line was able to block well, and uh, we just um, had to get it to the outside and keep it going. I think as long as defense holds up well, you know, make some stops, and get some turnovers, the offense will do well. Every team in Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A Top 10 won last night and won convincingly, including number one Charleston. The top-ranked Tigers travel next Saturday to undefeated and red-hot Lafayette County. Junction City's number two, then it's Barton, Risen, and Bearden. Now, Risen goes to number 15, Gillette, next week in what will likely decide the 8AA title. Danville starts the second five, followed by Hector, Jessiville, and Hampton. Hampton faced Class 3A's Prescott and Star City in the non-conference. That got the Bulldogs ready for last night. Hampton crushed Spartman. Hughes is number 10 and left little doubt that it's the best team in the 3AA with its convincing win at Cross County last night. Lafayette County continues its climb in Hooton's rankings with an impressive a 14 to 7 win over Mineral Springs. The Cougars held Mineral to just 39 yards of offense. The Hornets are number 12, then it's Elkins and Bauxite. The Miners will play host to Jesseville next week, and that will likely decide the 5AA championship. Gillette is number 15, and the bottom five looks like this. The Buckaroos, the Go Devils, Pea Ridge, Augusta, and Dirks. Augusta and Dirks trading places there, while Dirks was slipping past Spring Hill by one point last night. Augusta was whipping Carlisle by 16. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. Wolves pigskin offensive line star Andrew Endicott is driven to succeed. Earning All-State honors in 2002, the immovable object is conquering the classroom with a perfect A average. Hard work is very important in both settings and the harder you work, the, you know, the better the results are going to be. Not many players can handle playing on both sides of the football, but Andrew can. <laughs> in 5A football, it takes a special person, whether it's going to be intense all the time. Andrew fits that bill, you know, he's, uh, he's very intense, very dedicated. Devoted in all aspects, Andrew Endicott is the well-deserving Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. All right, Joe, thanks a lot, and congratulations to Andrew Endicott from Lake Hamilton, our Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football highlights from Class 3A, including top-ranked Pulaski Academy against Central Arkansas Christian and Shiloh Christian against Farmington. Highlights of those games and more coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas football. From Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. And we begin our Class 3A highlights with top-ranked Pulaski Academy. The Bruins coming off wins over defending state champs Stuttgart and Warren the past two weeks. An opening conference play last night against undefeated Central Arkansas Christian. P. 
PA had beaten CAC by an average of 53 to 12 the past three years, but CAC jumped to an early seven to nothing lead, and in the second quarter, Ellis Copeland takes the handoff and dashes six yards for another score. That puts CAC up 14 to nothing, and you can smell the upset. PA trying to fight back though, Senior quarterback Adam Thrash connects with his favorite receiver, John Aaron Reese. That's a first down for PA. Then Thrash goes back to Reese. Another first down. Time winding down in the first half. Just 40 seconds before the break, Thrash will cap the drive with a seven yard touchdown. That pulled PA to within 14 to six, but that's as close as the Bruins would get. CAC shocks Pulaski Academy. The Bruins have won nine straight on Mustang Mountain and are in control of the 6AA race. Final score, CAC 28, Pulaski Academy 14. From Mustang Mountain to West Fork, where the Ozark Hillbillies were looking to slow down the improved West Fork Tigers, Ozark was blazing from the start. Jonathan Flanagan threw the hole, out one of the Tigers, Ozark's up 7-0, but West Fork's defense gets fired up. Watch this, Nathan Cantrell with the quarterback sack, but Ozark's offense had enough to win this one. The Hillbillies are set for a showdown next week with Boonville. Final score, Ozark Hillbillies 14, West Fork 0. Prairie Grove has made the playoffs seven straight years, and we're looking to extend that streak last night at Gentry's Pioneer Pad. Prairie Grove built a first quarter lead, but Gentry would threaten. Ray Ryan hits Levi Jack for a 21 yard gain down to the one yard line, but that's where Prairie Grove's defense would dig in and stop Gentry. But the Pioneers would come right back, threatening again. Timmy Spoon takes the handoff 30 yards. A few plays later, Gentry at the one yard line, but fumbles. Fortunately for the Pioneers, William Cortez is there to pick it up and take it in for a score and pull Gentry within 14 to eight, but it was all Prairie Grove after that. Final score, Tigers 52, Gentry eight. Newport breezed through the two AAA last year, but the Greyhounds found themselves in a dogfight last night with Hoxie. Hoxie trailed just 18 to 14 in the third quarter, playing tough. Austin Abbott fights for extra yards for the Mustangs but the night belonged to Newport's sophomore, Quentin Alcorn. Filling in for an injured Fred Brown, Alcorn rushed for 274 yards. 35 right here, and a few plays later, senior Hunter Smith would cap the drive for Newport. His five yard touchdown made it Greyhounds 24, Hoxie 14. On its next position, Newport goes back to Alcorn, ripping through the Mustangs for another 30 yard gain down to the one yard line. Senior quarterback Trey Metzger would take it from there as Newport pulls away late. Final score, Newport 30, Hoxie 17. Well, my game plan was to work hard and to play as hard as we could and to stop the run and the pass. And I believe our defense and our offense clicked and worked really good. The Prescott Curly Wolves are the new number one team in Class 3A. Prescott got to be number one without even playing last night. An open day for Prescott and a loss by Pulaski Academy makes the Curly Wolves number one. CAC jumps nine spots to number two with that big win over PA last night. The Lumberjacks are number four and the Hillbillies are five. Then it's Rivercrest and Boonville. Look for Boonville to really test Ozark next week. The Bearcats have the best defense in Class 3A. Star City's number eight, and Shiloh Christian is nine. The Saints scored four first half touchdowns last night and beat Farmington by 35. Newport's number 10, then it's the Seminoles and Oak Grove. Nashville got its first win last night against Mina. Dumas is 14 and Dollarway's 15. Even though the Cardinals are winless, they still should make the playoffs in that rugged eight triple A. Waldron's number 16, followed by Ashdown, Berryville, the Redskins, and Atkins. At number 20, Atkins is undefeated. And Coach Charlie Sorrells is much back in the top 20 for the first time in three years. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. The Ozark Hillbillies are ranked number five in Class 3A and off to a three and one start with quarterback Chaz Holderman leading the Hillbilly offense. Even with defenses king on Holderman, he is averaging more than 120 yards offense per game. He totaled 220 yards last week, completing eight of 11 passes for 167 yards and a victory over Class 4A Siloam Springs. Ozark's best running back is its quarterback, Chaz Holderman, and he's our Coleman Kid of the Week.
And congratulations to Chaz Holderman of Ozark, our Coleman Kid of the Week, and the Hillbillies, another top 10 team for them this year as the Hillbillies won last night up at West Fork. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 4A highlights are next. And we begin our Class 4A highlights up in Batesville, where the Pioneers are undefeated and we're looking to avenge a 10-point loss last year at Bologna. Sonic Super Team quarterback Kyle Francis set the tone early for Batesville. Big gainer up the middle. That was set up a four-yard touchdown run by Antonio McCoy. And just like that, Batesville's up 7-0. Bologna came right back, though. Joshua McIntyre's going to slip through the line and run down the far sideline. That tied it up at 7. But Batesville's offense is steady with Francis at quarterback. He would pass for 128 yards and a couple of touchdowns, including this screen toss that McCoy takes to the end zone. That made it 14 to seven. Bologna would fight back with plays like this from running back Justin Shaw. He's a dandy. And the Eagles actually led this thing in the second half before Batesville scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Final score, unbeaten Batesville 28, Bologna 21. Our second stop in Class 4A takes us to win, where the fifth-ranked Yellow Jackets enjoyed a 21-7 lead over Nettleton at halftime. That's when the home crowd enjoy their award-winning band, their charismatic cheerleaders, and free T-shirts from Hooters Arkansas football. Nettleton entered the game with a 2-1 record, but those victories have come against a pair of AAA teams. Welcome to the Delta Swarm. Wins quarterback Brian Johnston rambled for two touchdowns and passed for another, and senior Akeen Reed rushed for 100. 41 yards and a touchdown. Reed set up Wentz's first score of the second half with this 22-yard run to the Nettleton four. Two plays later, it was Courtney Williams for the touchdown, and the Yellow Jackets went up by three TDs. Win improves to 4-0. Final score, Yellow Jackets 34, Nettleton 14. Sylvan Hills has won two straight games since losing to Cersei in the season opener, and last night the Bears played host to winless North Pulaski. North Pulaski was thinking upset on the opening drive. Mitchell Regnus drops back and lost the ball 26 yards to Kelvin Stovall. The Falcons fly to a 7-0 lead. Sylvan Hills answers with its workhorse, Camming Kareem. Juking and jiving into the end zone from five yards out. Then quarterback Arthur Cooley cooled through the air. He finds Sam Gibbons for a 10-yard TD, and the Bears begin to roar. Final score, Sylvan Hills 27, North Pulaski 7. The Hot Springs Lakeside Rams had beaten Little Rock Fair in the past two years, but the Rams entered last night's game as a slight underdog. On its first possession, Lakeside marches toward the goal line behind the tough running of senior quarterback Chris Stewart, then bullish senior Daniel Atkinson takes it in, and the Rams are up 7 to nothing. Fair answers via the air as Eric Griffin hooks up with Charles Hayes for the first down. A few plays later, Maurice Burns dives in for Fair, and we are tied at 7. But Lakeside would rally with two touchdowns in the final five minutes, and Hot Springs Lakeside finishes like a playoff team. Final score, Lakeside 27, Fair 20. Our new number one team in Class 4A is the Harrison Golden Goblins. They won it all in 1999, and last night ambushed Alma 21 to nothing. Sylvan Hills is number two, then it's Greenwood. Batesville and Wynn will likely be 9-0 when they meet the first weekend of November. Alpha drops to number six, then it's Crossett and Stuttgart. Robinson is undefeated and the highest ranked team from the Southwest Conference. Maloney is number 10, then it's Arkadelphia. The Badgers are also undefeated and could be headed back for the playoffs. The Devil Dogs are 12, then it's Mills, West Helena, Whitehall, and Paragould. Malvern thumped Hot Springs last night. The Leopards look like they can make the playoffs for only the the second time in six years. Marion's number 18. There's Lakeside. The Rams back in the top 20 and looking like a playoff contender. And the Hope Bobcats round out the top 20. Coming up next, more of Hooters Arkansas football. Class 5A highlights. A lot of big games, including number one against number two, Springdale and Southside. Highlights of that one and more are next. You're watching Hooters Arkansas football. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Big Red Fina. And we begin our Class 5A highlights with number one Springdale, unveiling their $200,000 Jumbotron. 
Just in time for a rematch of last year's state title game against Fort Smith Southside. Brace yourself, here come the highlights. Brandon Martinez, 27 yard touchdown pass to Andrew Norman. Springdale's up seven nothing. The Rebels come back on fourth and one at the 14. It's Scott Eady dashing into the end zone at tied it at seven. Southside would go up 10 to seven in the second quarter. That's when Springdale's stud running back, Zach Butler gets loose, breaking tackles and out racing the Rebels secondary. 68 yards, Springdale's up 14 to 10. Still in the first half, Martinez back in the air and again connecting with Norman. This time from 62 yards out, it's another Springdale touchdown. The Bulldogs were up 21 to 10 at the half. In the third quarter, Southside comes back with senior quarterback John Thomas, finding smooth, slick Shelley. 22-yard touchdown, that put the Rebels within 21 to 16. A little bit later in the third quarter, it's Thomas again, back to the air, and who else? Slick Shelley gets it, another touchdown, that pulled Southside to within 24 to 22. But Springdale would answer through the air. Martinez hitting senior Brett Burrish for a 32-yard TD strike. When Southside needs a play, you know who they go to. Thomas hitting Slick Shelley. That made it a two-point game again. And in the fourth quarter, Southside gets the break it was looking for. Martinez is intercepted by Alex Cogville, who takes it all the way back to the nine-yard line and gives Southside some hope. And Thomas shows why he's a super team quarterback, finding Ben Brackett on a five-yard touchdown pass. That's all Southside would need to survive in Springdale. Rebels 35, Springdale 31. The Conway Wampus Cats were ranked number three in the state by Hooten's Arkansas Football, and the Wampus Cats had center stage last night to prove they were deserving of that ranking against Little Rock Central, a battle of unbeatens. But Central's defense set the tone of the second play of the game, knocking the ball away from Peyton Hillis, and Stanley Wakwe recovers and sets up tough running Mickey Dean. Dean would rush for 98 yards on the night. He gets 10 here, and the Tigers are up 7 to nothing. Now Central has a passing game, too. Junior quarterback Clark Irwin hooks up with Stuart Franks for a shake and bake first down. A few plays later, Irwin's short TD puts Central up 14 to zip. Conway would answer on special teams. Senior Kevin Wardlow, he started at his own seven. He won't break stride, going 93 yards. Where would Conway be without so much talent? But talent wasn't enough against Central, which may have the best defense in 5A. Final score, Tigers 21, Conway 19. Rogers was riding a 15-game conference losing streak entering last night's game at rival Bentonville, so the Mounties wanted to get off to a quick start. That's exactly what they did. Johnny Brewer hits Brandon Fagans for an 11-yard touchdown. Bentonville would bounce back though four plays later. Senior Adam Clark takes the handoff on an end around. He'll rumble past the Mountie defense, 66 yards for the touchdown. Bentonville and Rogers were tied at seven. In the second quarter, Rogers' defense makes the biggest play of the Ronnie Peacock era. As sophomore linebacker Zach Caton strips Bentonville's Ben Wallace and Caton goes 33 yards for the touchdown. The Mounties have the momentum, and in the fourth quarter, Brewer would hit Josh Hanks for the game-clinching touchdown, and Rodgers is 4-0 for the first time since 1981. Final score, Ronnie Peacock's Rodgers Mounties 28, Bentonville 7. The last touchdown was the dagger in the heart. You know, we, we had an opportunity early, earlier, and we ended up getting a turnover, and uh, you know, I, I was disappointed in the turnover, so that's something that we hadn't been used to. Van Buren Porters over at Fort Smith Northside last night in the battle of winless teams. On the opening kickoff, Northside's Peter Patong loses the pigskin and Van Buren recovers it at the 25 yard line. But the Pointers can't stand prosperity. They give it right back to the Grizzlies. William Franklin falls on the ball for the Bears. And seven plays later, Northside's offense scores its second touchdown of the season. Back up, running back Kyle on Morgan, juking and faking with some nifty moves. He gets his first touchdown. And North sides up six to nothing. Morgan and the Grizzlies would add another score in the second half, and that's all they needed. Final score, Fort Smith North side 12, Van Buren six. It was homecoming last night at Little Rock McClellan, but the Lions didn't need any extra motivation playing their first conference game against former coach Brian Hudson and North Little Rock. 
McClellan jumped to an 18-0 lead when North Little Rock turns to its senior quarterback, William LaFere. He gets the short touchdown dive. That made it 18-6, but that was as close as North Little Rock would get all night as McClellan wins its third straight. Final score, Crimson Lions 31, North Little Rock 14. So we have a new number one team in Class 5A. The Rebels are on top. The defending state champs 3-1 on the season after last night's win over Springdale. The Bulldogs have lost two in a row and now must prepare for their big rival, Fayetteville. The Purple Dogs are undefeated, as is Central and Bryant. West Memphis moves up to number six this week. Conway's down to seven. Russell's eighth. The Zebras and the Mounties are both undefeated. Camden Fairview starts second tip, and El Dorada drops a couple of spots despite winning over Wild. Watson Chapel last night. There's Cabot and Bentonville. Lake Hamilton stays the same at 15. Then it's Jacksonville and Jonesboro, right where they were last week. Texarkana's up one 